Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Ranger Journal podcast. I am your host for the first half of tonight's show. It is a, an interview with Graham, who is a heart supporter, and we're going to be talk, talking all things Lauren Shanklin. Once the interview is done, um, in around 20 to 25 minutes, um, I'll be putting the countdown clock on, and we will be putting the panel in place, and then Ross will be taking over for a good old, a good mighty old Lauren Shanklin debate. This is about time this um, talking point gets put to bed, and I hear at the Rangers Journal we're going to do our best to do that for you. Enjoy. Hi Graham, how you doing mate? I'm alright mate, how are you? Oh absolutely fine, thank you for coming on and um, talking about which could be a very sensitive subject for you, the fact that <laughs> um, we're going to be talking about Lauren Shanklin and the chances are he could go to Rangers, is it good enough? We're just going to delve right into it. Um, first of all, well, I think we all know how he's playing this season, he's top scorer, he's doing really well for Hearts. Uh, how, would, you, would you reckon his Scotland chances are for Euros? I'm not confident, obviously, oh. in a biased opinion. And as a Scotland fan as well, he should start because he's Scotland's best striker. He does something that, let's be honest, Lyndon Dykes and Chad Adams don't do, which is score goals. He's got a far better record than both of those two put together. He should start, but I think Steve Clark would be very loyal to the guys that have got him there. So he probably will end up playing Dykes and Adams. But there's no debate for me, and it shouldn't ever be a debate. Lauren Shanklin's the best striker Scotland have got, and he should start. Now, we've got two friendlies coming up. We've got Holland on Friday and then Northern Ireland next week. I would hope he'll get minutes in both those games, but I don't think he'll start in Germany, but I really hope I'm wrong and he does. Aye, so they are. I, I really hope he starts in Germany as well. I think he's the best striker in Scotland just now. And when I say that, I'm meaning he's better than Kyogo Furuhashi, who's been probably the best striker in Scotland the last two years, to be fair. Um, I think Shanklin's been absolutely outstanding this season. Um, which what part of Shankland do you enjoy you like kind of watching the most when he's playing for Hearts? Well, obviously his goals are a massive part, but I actually think he was already in game, and I've said this before as well to other people. He's already in games a lot better than folk give him credit for. He's great link up play, he's got really good hold up play, he's got really good game intelligence. I mean, a lot of folk look at Shankland and say he just scores penalties, but he doesn't. No, this season anyway, because he has <laughs> missed a few. But generally, he's been fantastic. Some of his goals that he scored this season have been top draw. Like, generally fantastic goals. And I just think his all-in game is really, really impressive. I mean, when he signed for Hearts in 2022, I put in a couple of group chats, I'm delighted with that, because I knew he would score goals, but I didn't know just how good he was going to be. That's now 55 goals in total since he's been here. And honestly, he's just been sensational. Can of start the season, he wasn't maybe kind of on form, but then that picked up. And I think a lot of folk early start of the season said he looks frustrated, he looks overweight. I never thought that. He just wasn't getting enough chances. But now they're starting to come and he's grabbing them. He's just unbelievable. He's in the form of his life just now. Aye, definitely, definitely. I think it's fair to say that in January, he was linked, but I think it was more kind of fan media and the media itself that was that was driving that um, potential move. Do you think he's Do you think he's ready for a, to, to go to Rangers? It's going to come out with it. Uh, I hope not. I hope he goes down south and really challenges himself. But there's no doubt if he goes to Rangers, with the chances that Rangers get, he will score goals. And he knows himself he's got a chance to win trophies, he's got a chance maybe to play Champions League football. So if he goes to Rangers, he's got a better chance of all that. But I would like him, from a negative point of, well, negative point of view for Rangers fans, to go down south and test himself maybe in the Championship, just something, something a bit different. But there's no doubt he would do a job at Rangers. I mean... You kind of messaged me earlier on with the stats for like him and Dessers, and it's night and day. I mean, mm -hmm. I said that earlier on. The difference between those two is mental. I mean, Shankler's got 27 goals this season, I think, in all competitions, and I think Dessers has got 16. But one of the stats that basically you showed me was the big chances missed. Shankler's had nine, Dessers has had 20. I mean, that just tells you all you need to know. I mean, Dessers is. He's one of these players that I think he would frustrate a lot of folk because he does get into positions, nice. Nice. but he misses so many chances <laughs> that if that, and I've said numerous times watching Rangers games on TV and stuff, that 
you put Shanklin in that team, Shanklin would score half the chances that Dessau's got. It's, it's night and day. Aye, definitely. Definitely. See how you mentioned about your stats and stuff there. Phil Clements already said like when we signed Fabio Silva, Fabio Silva was his type of striker because he drops deep, he links play up, he runs the channels, he gets in the box. Can Shanklin do all that? Currently it hurts. I wouldn't say he can run the channels, but he can definitely drop deep because when we had Josh Ginelli, um kind of last season, Ginelli played up top and Shanklin played him behind and he's more than capable of doing that. I've got no doubt about that. He is more than capable of playing that number 10 role. Right, I think okay. the, the only thing, and I've said this before, the only thing that Shanklin lacks is that yard of pace. If he had that, he would be frightening because he's got everything else. I spoke about earlier, he's got great link-up play, he's hold-up play, he's game intelligence, bring folk into the game. It's just that bit of a lack of pace. If he had that, he'd be fantastic. Do you think that um, game intelligence sort of in terms of positioning, where to be and where he's expecting the ball to be, do you think that kind of makes up for that yard of pace he's missing? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, generally, I honestly think he's one of the, I think I've said before, he's one of the best strikers I've seen at Hearts for a long, long time. Like, I was brought up with John Robertson, who was outstanding. We've not had a player like that since then, which sounds mental because Robo retired in 1998. But we've had decent strikers in the past, like Stephen Nesmith himself, Kyle Lafferty, Andreas Felicka, I seem to be going down a Rangers road here. But we have our good strikers in the past, but nobody as clinical as Shankland. Like any game that we play just now, I always think we've got a chance with Shankland on the team. And I've seen him do it before, where he's dropped deep, picked up great positions, played folk in. He's just a brilliant footballer. And like I said, 55 goals in what, a season and a half? I can't, I can't say any less than that. He's been phenomenal. How many goals are you expecting him to finish with this season? Are you expecting him to... That's to be his best year in terms of goal return. Yeah, well, he got 28 last season. He's got 27 this season. That's now, right. barring a major disaster, I think there's like nine games left. So there's eight league games, a Scottish Cup semi-final. Hopefully 10 if we get to the final. I would imagine that he will be sitting comfortably on at least 35, which would be fantastic. Honestly, the run of form he's been on has been incredible. Didn't score on Saturday, obviously, but got booked for a dive that was never a dive. Ridiculous decision. But I don't see any reason why I can't hit at least 35. Right. Where, see in terms of, where, where do you think he's at in terms of signing a contract that Hearts are put in front of him? He's been offered pretty much everything we can throw at him, I think. Hearts have basically said he's been offered the best contract we can give him. Now, he has said himself that there's plenty of time. He's got, what, 16, 17 months left in his contract. There is no rush. I'm still hoping, probably wrongly that he's going to sign that contract I think every Hearts fan's hoping that but I'm I'm not confident he will I really hope end of the season um, that he will turn around and say I'm going to stay because I think he loves that Hearts he's enjoying it at Hearts he's a captain just now he's playing the best football I think of his career he's going to get a shape in football so I hope he signs it but I've kind of said before that I'm not confident and if he does go then fair enough I've got no I've got no qualms about that. I'm not going to run these guys that goes, if he goes to Rangers, it's going to say, oh, you know, devastating, he's, you know, all the negative stuff. I'm going to see exactly what he is. He's been brilliant for us. So I'm not going to be negative if he goes, but I hope he does sign that contract. Seeing t- you mentioned European football there, that's quite a, an interesting point. Um, how has he played? I know when Hearts won the Conference League last season, he had a run of matches and that, he had the qualifiers this season. Where does it kind of level for you in European football? Probably, probably Conference League. I would listen. I'd love to get Europa League. That would be the icing on the cake for me. But I think we're probably maybe better in the Conference League. Now that hasn't shown recently because we got knocked out of that. But I generally think Conference League is not a bad place to be. I think yes for the trips in Europe. Europa League is probably better. But I think Conference League we might have a chance of that. But again, it would all depend on the draw. We have to get European football, of course, and I think we will. But it would all depend on the draw. If we get a decent draw, we've got a decent chance. I mean, Aberdeen, I think, should have got out the group that they were in. I think if Hearts had that, I'd probably fancy it. So, yeah, I would probably say Conference League is probably our aim. OK. Um, can Shanklin... Do you think Shanklin could score goals in Europa? What's his performance has been like in Europe? He's done all right. He has scored a few goals. I mean, some of them were penalties. But his overall game, again, he's been excellent. So I have no doubt he would do really well in European football. 
Now, we know that the question will be if he went to Rangers, got Champions League football, could he compete in that? I don't see why he shouldn't. He's a goal scorer. And every team's looking for that goal scorer. Rangers don't currently have that just now because Dessers just doesn't score enough goals. I know they've got Danilo to come back. They've got Sima to come back. They do have players to come back. But Lauren Shankin, for me, as much as I want him to go, would be the icing on the cake for Rangers and he would score goals. And he would do the same for Hearts in Europe. I've got no doubt about that. Right, we're going to get the kind of the, the bugberry on him. What, what type of fee do you think Hearts would be demanding for Shankland in the summer compared to what they would I think it was around maybe four four million in January. I think that's fair to say. Um, what kind of fee would, would you be expecting Hearts to get? I would, I'd be hoping for at least double that. Now, I know folk will look at his age and say he's 28. Maybe I have one more move for him. But like I said, he's a goal scorer. And we really can't sell him for, for on the cheap. Now, again, I did say previously that I think the whole Rangers stuff in January was very much media-driven, and I said that previously. I don't even think Rangers were looking at him. From what I've heard, it was all media-driven, which is fine. That's what they're there to do. But I generally would be looking for at least around £8 million. For a guy that's going to score you goals, I don't think that's that cheap. It's interesting you say that. Um, obviously, Bojan Mayovsky, I think that's the kind of numbers that's been touted for him at Aberdeen. But the general public, I would like to say, would see that as a wee bit more acceptable because he's aged. Do you think eight million is a realistic price tag for Shankland? Eh? Yeah, I don't see it as it shouldn't be. I know that Mayovsky's younger, he's got a bit more pace about him, but Shankland's been doing this consistently now. He's got a lot more goals. And this debate comes around all the time this season so far. You know, who's the better player, Mayovsky or Shankland? You can do what you want with stats, but it's quite clearly Shankland just now with the goals he's got. So I don't think eight million is far off what I'd be looking for. Again, I don't know what we'll be looking at. I don't know the numbers that we'll put on it, but I don't think eight million would be far off it. Mm, fair enough. Fair enough. Um I think as do you know I think as a wee bit confident considering he's got twelve months left in his deal end of season though. No, I don't think so. I I've generally yeah. been asked this question numerous times and I've said between I mean probably a starting point would be six million, but I generally would be saying at least eight. For the, for the player that he is, for the goal scorer you've got, and like we've just talked about his all-round game, I don't think £8 million is is anything like as bad as what I think folk is. I don't think £8 million is a is a bad thing for me, because I honestly think he's worth it. Aye, aye. Okay, that's that's, that's a, a fair enough um, summary, I suppose, in terms of his price tag that you, you think Hearts will demand. Um do you think if he's a good Euros heart, there's more of a chance the hearts are likely to get it? Like, how realistically do you think that price tag is for Jinx? Somebody's going to come and pay that. It might be, like I said, maybe a championship team in England that are looking at him. They probably would. I don't think Rangers would. But I don't mind who pays it as long as somebody pays up. If they want our best player and our best goal scorer, you've got to pay the money for them. And I don't think eight million is far off what I'd be looking for if I if I was chairman. But I do think the Euros would have a big effect. Like I said, I don't think he'll start. I really hope he does, because he honestly, he deserves to start in front of Adams and Dykes. So I think if, if he was to have a decent Euros, then there would be clubs I think would be looking at him going, actually, we could do with someone like him. So I think somebody would definitely pay it. I mean, you've seen a goal he scored against Georgia um, in the last set of internationals. I think he's more than proven that he can do it at international level, hasn't he? He has, and he came off the bench that day. And then I think the game after that, he got about two minutes. What's he going to do in that time? You've got to give the guy a chance. You know, Scotland have got players that I think could create chances for him. You've got the likes of McGinn, the likes of McTominay that could create chances for him. And he's more likely to score, let's be honest, than an Adams or Dykes is. And I think you need that. Every club needs that goal scorer. And thankfully, Scotland and Hearts have got that. So I would like to see him get more of a chance. I know that I heard um, the assistant a couple, of, or I think it was yesterday actually, talking about, you know, there could be another Lauren Shanklin that we don't know about. Well, I don't see anyone coming through. Mm -hmm. What type of service do you do you think he needs? I think, like, in terms of, I think there's a bit of a myth when it comes to Rangers having more chances, so to speak, because nine times out of ten they're playing against a low block. So I really watch, well, before more so before come on come in, I watched the Rangers really struggle to um to create a decent amount of chances against a low block at Ibrooks. What what kind of chances does, does Shanklin need to 
to get him uh, taken. I've seen numerous times this season that Shanklin's actually scored the goal out of nothing. It doesn't need much. But I think he's a type of striker that needs balls in the box from out wide. So whether it's Tavernier on the right or maybe, I don't know, Cortez or someone on the left, if they're putting crosses in that box, that's the type of service Shanklin thrives on. But like I've said, some of the goals I've seen Shanklin scores this season have been ridiculous how, how well he's taken them. Like just shots measure the box outside of the foot. I've seen him score. I've seen him score like half volleys and stuff. He tends to score brilliant goals. But I've always thought with Shankland, if you can get that ball in the box from out wide, he will score goals. There's no doubt about that. But he, he needs that service coming at him. Aye, definitely, mate. Definitely. Who's your favourite Lord Shankland goal this season? He scored quite a few, but there was one against St Mirren that he scored. Basically, just a snapshot on the turn, and he volleyed it in the top corner um, from the edge of the box. And there's also one against Aberdeen, outside of the foot. Brilliant finish. So he has scored a number of brilliant goals this season. That was the one that... um, I was the one against Aberdeen at home, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. I I think I was watching that game. Um, Can you see Shankland potentially in the summer? See, let's speak hypothetically again. Rangers come in. Um, put a bid in Hearts reject it could you see him down in tools is he that type of player nah I don't generally think he is I've, I've never seen that from him he looks like he's enjoying it at Hearts I've never seen him having a fall out with anyone some folk have said to start the season to look lazy I don't agree with that like I said I just think he wasn't getting chances but he generally seems like the type of player that and I think he said it before as well he's not a type of player that's going to rock the boat so if he doesn't get a move I don't think it'll derail him. I think he'll just get back up and get on with it. So I don't see that being an issue. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I, I've noticed he scored quite a few goals against um, the old firm this season. Um, things about two maybe against Celtic, three. I think he scored one against us. To me, he's proven that he's more or less done it at a, at a high level. I think he scored against everybody in the league, I think. And like I said, the type of goals he scores as well. I mean, Shankland's one of these players, he may not see him for a while, but then he'll just pop up with a goal. And he has scored against Celtic and Rangers. Scored against, he's got a really good record against Hibs as well, which always helps. So yeah, he is scoring in big, big games. He's not one of these guys that's scoring in, like, I don't know, say against like a Livingston or a, no disrespect to these teams, or a Ross County. He is actually scoring in big games. He even right. scored at Hamden as well. And it was a penalty, but still got to score it. So he does score in big games. So he, he is very much proven at this level. All right, well, Magic, well, thank you for coming on, Graham. It's no worries, call. mate. Thanks for having me on. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, so I'm on Twitter, um, at Graham01266284, I think it is. All right, smashing pal. Thank you for coming on again. Cheers, mate. Much appreciated. Well, good evening. We've just heard from Scotty there on his um, on his baby, shall we say, Lawrence Shankland, whether or not a uh, heart fan thinks he is good enough to play for the famous Glasgow Rangers. Now, we all may have our opinions, uh, and tonight we have got some fairly opinionated people in the room who are going to debate whether or not Lawrence Shankland is good enough to wear the royal blue. You may see me wearing black and white tonight. You have not skipped across to a Newcastle United podcast, no. <laughs> I am your referee this evening where I'm going to be sat peacefully. I feel like I should be on an umpire's chair up here, sat peacefully asking uh, these two guys. And hopefully we're we're joined by another couple of guests um, about whether or not this guy is good enough and the real deal. Um, The first question I want to ask Scotty. Mm -hmm. Rangers bought in Danilo, Dessas, Cortez, Fabio Silva. Um, amongst Diamande, other attacking options for Rangers, as well as having Roof, Matondo, other attacking players. Do we actually need Lawrence Shankland, or have we just been hit with injuries? Yes, <laughs> we absolutely do. We absolutely do need them, mate. We need somebody that's going to score goals clinically in this league. We need a proven goal scorer, and that's what Lawrence Shankland does. Lawrence Shankland's a proven international goal scorer. It might add that into. Um, he scored. That's what Graham was just saying to me there. He scored 27 goals so far this season. His best tally has been 28 goals. He's, so he's definitely going to beat that. There's there's no doubt about it. He scored against everybody there is to score against. Um, 
and for me, he's just he's just a better player than several Dessers. Can I believe we wasted four and a half million on Dessers? To be honest with you, Russ. Yeah, Billy, I'll introduce you this evening. How are you, buddy? I'm okay, mate. I love the outfit. I wasn't expecting that. But well, <laughs> well, Scotty went on my first whistle, so you'll go on my second whistle now. No um, I see you've got Shanklin's caravan there as your tag for the night. <laughs> I'm going to pose you the same question. We've brought in a number of attacking players, spent a lot of a lot of our budget on it. I know that Clement said that most of that budget was spent up front in the summer with a view to bed those players in. Do we need Shankland? We could be doing with Shankland, but we're going to need to move on from the mess of the signings from last summer. We we could be doing with him just now, definitely, but he's not the way forward for us. And uh, he looks like he's towing me. That's why I chose the name. And he's too slow. He's he's not a right fit for us. And I hope some of the evidence I've gathered um, in preparation for this will go on to prove that. Uh, I'll welcome Shona as well to the pod this evening from Four Lads Had a Dream. How are you, Shona? I'm very well. Can you hear me, guys? Can yes. hear you loud and clear, perfectly. Um, so, Shona, I've introduced Scotty and Billy and posed a question their way. Uh, now, I'm not going to give away what side of the debate you're actually on at the minute, but I'll ask you the same question. Rangers have bought in Danilo, Dessas, Cortez, uh, Fabio Silva. We have McCausland, Roof, uh, Diamande, all Lawrence, Campwell, all attacking players. Do we need do we need this guy from Hearts, Lawrence Shankland? Personally, no, I don't think so. I think um, a lot of it will be obviously judged at the end of the season. But I think uh, from what I've been looking at, looking at his um, minutes per goal ratio against Dessers, I think they're about, about the same. Um, and yeah, for me, I just don't think that the money that we'd be spending on Lawrence Shankland could be spent in other better places like the likes of Seema. Um, reference to him. So yeah, like uh, for me, it's not it's a no for me, but I do get the argument about Shankland, there's no doubt that Boy is a good player, but for me, I think um, if you're looking at the transfer and how much it's going to cost, it's it's not it's not for me. Fair enough. Well, it's a good point, Sharon, and we'll, we'll we'll dip into some of those points in a minute. Uh, I'm going to welcome our next contender in the Royal Rumble this evening. We've got <laughs> Dean Logan, who has joined the pod. Ding, ding, ding. Welcome, Dean. How are you, pal? I'm very well, thank you. Ross, how are you, mate? Yes, I am good. I am good. good. Just now I've got you all here. I want this to be a nice, clean fight. Nothing below the belt. Shona, I know what you're like, so keep it all uh, where I can see it, please. Um, Dean, I've posed this question to the others just to kick things off and get people talking. Danilo, Seema, Dessas. Uh, we've got Fabio Silva, Diomande. We've got McCausland. We've got Roof. We've got Campwell. We've got Lawrence. Why do we need this guy, Lawrence Shankland? Because he scores goals in our league. Simple. Is that yeah. a mic drop moment, is it? Okay, got you. <laughs> is, so it's as, easy as, that, as easy as that, he's the, he's the best striker in, in Scottish football. That's why we need him. Shona touched on a good point there. His goals per minute ratio is very similar to uh, our very own Serial Dessers. Um, so how, how does that sit with you? That's it. I can come um, in on that, actually. Um, I looked up his, his stats earlier on. So Shanklin was 0. 0.66 and Dessers was 0.48. Goals per, per game. I thought that was a bit bit more of a, a difference than I was expecting. I've got it down in um, 134 minutes for Shankland and 133 minutes for Dacers per goal. Fair, I might just be looking at the league, so I, I don't know if we're definite, but... Ross, can I get my slide up, please? Oh, here we go. You can indeed. Thank you, Kai Watson, for assisting me in this open goal. Let me present to you Serial Dessers versus Lawrence Shankland. Appearances, 26 versus 30. Starts, 19 versus 30. Minutes played, blah, blah, blah. Goals, 12 versus 20. Minutes per goal, 133 versus 134. Conversion rate, 15% to 18%. Penalties, zero. Shankland scored two out of five. We don't need them for that anyway. We've got Tav. Big chances missed, 20 for Serial Dessers, nine for Lawrence Shankland. Two assists for Cyril Dessers, one for Shankland. Chances created, 28, Lawrence Shankland. For somebody that's a poacher and doesn't do any work outside the box, 37 chances created is pretty decent, if you ask me. I need to come in on that, Scott. I need to come in three because... Minutes, three minutes, Billy. No, wait, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Just one thing. Why are we comparing Dessers with Shankland? Mm -hmm. What's Dessers to do with it? Hmm? 
What's Dessels because got Des- to do? Because Dessels is the only fit striker at Rangers just now. But we, we, could, we can't play Shanklin anyway at the moment, so what's the, we, we might not have Dessels next season. In fact, we don't think we, we will have com- Dessels next season. We need season. to compare him to somebody. We need to compare him to somebody. <laughs> not why, not the Rangers, why not the current Rangers number nine? So, dribbling success, 26% versus 46%. Fouls won, 14 over 30. Ball recoveries, this is a bit that like, I was really surprised at. Was Shanklin's get 80 over Dessel's 42. And then below, ladies and gentlemen, you have the heat maps. Tells the rain story. What about his dispossession okay. stats? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pose another question. You blame Guy for that one. <laughs> I'm going to pose this question to, uh, to Shona. So Shona, oh, um, yes. quite a compelling message here. Clearly we're, com- we're comparing serial Dessers. Arguably not the man to, to lead Rangers number nine versus someone who could potentially be that that man in the future. Is there a point to be to be made here that clearly Shankland scores goals? We know that. But are they too reliant on Shankland, whereas our goals come from a plethora of other players? So if Shankland is a, is is in the Rangers team, will players not just mark him out the game and not look to just identify him as a clear source of goals? I, I totally agree with what you're saying there. I've looked at obviously the, the other Hearts goal scorers, and uh, so far we've got in our t- in Rangers team we've got over three or four guys that are on over t- over double figures. Um, one of them being Tav Seema, and then obviously Dazers that have obviously scored double figures this year. The next person that scored goals for Hearts is on four goals, so it just shows you that the whole t- the whole um, Hearts team is surrounded by what Shanklin does. Um, I know everybody's saying there that he performs in the big teams. Well. Um, against the big teams. He hasn't really performed against Rangers this season. So, look, I think Balogun and uh, John Sturt have had him in his back pocket. Um, I think if you do stop Lawrence Shanklin, you stop Hearts from playing. Um, but, look, for me, it's it's more about his fee. I think um, if you're going to look at um, signing uh, Lawrence Shanklin, you're looking at um, not, nothing above £1.5 million. I think people were talking about Hearts wanting £5 million pound for him. I think if you look at £5 million pound and you see he's on around about 18 to 20 grand a week, Total transfer fee for that would be about eight eight point one million pounds, and this goes back to that money could be well spent for in other places. I think personally, the likes of Sima, uh, Cortez, there's other people in that those those um, positions I would rather have. I think um, for for me, it's just not. I think if you look at other players that have um, gone abroad as well, like Shanklin, hasn't succeeded. We've been linked with players like uh, Van Veen. I think Van Veen had more goals than Shanklin last year as well. You've got Duke. You've had Stevie May, Martin Boyle, Kevin Nisbet in the past. All of them have gone on to other other clubs, bigger clubs actually than uh, than Laurie Shankland. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, they haven't been able to cut it. So for me personally, I just think Shankland is very very suited to Hearts. I think he is a, a, a good a good striker. Do I think he'll he'll score twenty plus goals for a season for Rangers? I don't think so because I don't think he'll be our number one striker. Um, but look, that's a, that's another debate. That's another um, for another day between Danilo Dessers and obviously. The likes of Shanklin, but look, um, I think everyone's all, all, obviously right to have their own opinion about it. But for me, I think if you look at players that have left to go to bigger clubs, bigger jerseys, you know what it's like playing for Rangers in that in that shirt. There's a lot more pressure to win games. Um, I think the recent game that um, Hearts played, the lost as well. So it just shows you that he's, he's not as he is vital to that Hearts team. But if Hearts are not playing and he doesn't score. Hearts are in a, in a shit, shiggly peg when it comes to uh, getting those points on the board for me. So, look, I, I'm not one for comparing Lauren Shanklin to Desers because I think we could be here all day arg- arguing this this for me. But, um, yeah, for me, I just think that you're not going to be paying any more than £1.5 million pound for Lauren Shanklin. Ross, can um, I come in on that? Come in here, please, Ross. Uh, oh, because go. it's going to in <coughs> the, the end of my answer. And the reason why we need Lauren Shankland in is because successful Rangers teams have always had Scottish players in them. Um, look back to Walter Smith's time, Scottish players were leading the line. Dick Advocat bought Billy Dodds for £1.3 million, which, you know, and maybe inflation now would be what Shankland's maybe worth. Chris Boyd scored goals for fun in SPL, never played in much in Europe because it never suited his game. But we signed him because we need those types of players and Lauren Shankland perfectly fits the mould. And just, the Lauren Shanklin, just coming into that, look, coming into that, Lauren Shanklin can't even get into the Scotland squad. It's number one. I know it's it's bizarre, ask isn't ask it? Steve Clark's up. <clears throat> I, mean, I remember when Jamie Vardy was at Leicester, and he was probably England's best centre forward, but he couldn't get in the team. So 
I don't really think we can use that as a you know as as a barometer as to how how good he would be for Rangers. Ross, hey. can I quickly come in? Yes, you can. Go on, Scott. Just on show, what I want to show on this point, especially was talking about Shanklin and how vital he is to Hearts. I think the reason Hearts are third in winning so many games is because of how important Shanklin is. I think it's because he's that good. He's carrying them through and winning them football matches, getting them three points in the board. So I just wanted to... He's, he's, only, one goals goals for them, he's only one scoring goals for them, Scott. He's only one scoring goals for them. He's only one that's scoring goals for them. The next the next top goal scorer for Hearts is on four goals. goals. So what does that tell you about Hearts? It tells me that they rely they rely on Laurie Shankland. And if they don't yeah, have they Laurie Shankland doesn't him. play. They rely on him and he delivers consistently. Okay, so just on, on that, Billy, we, we, we Shona gave some good points there about the, the goal stats, and that's quite an interesting topic, I think. Um if he comes to Rangers from his point of view, and realistically Okay, we're going to, if we get Shankland, and we're still going to be getting another top top level striker in. Realistically, will he be okay going from being the main man who's firing goals in for them every week to being potentially a substitute, a roof point two who comes off the bench? I don't think we'll ever we'll ever know. I mean, I listened to some of the interview that Scott was doing there, um, and Graham seemed to think that he's not one to cause a fuss. But he's probably always been, at least in the last few years, he's always kind of been the the, the main guy in the team. So we're yet to see. Um, I mean, I take Dean's point on on board about um you know Chris Boyd and have the Scottish spine, but he's going to be what twenty nine years old by the start of next season. We should be looking at young Scottish players for for a third striker positions, not not someone who's on the 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 very peak of his. He's way he's crest, sorry. So it's not I mean, I do appreciate that, but he's only going to go down. He's not going to we're not going to get any money back for him. It's not part of the player trading model we're supposed to hear about. What's the point in signing him? Scotty, thoughts? Um, the point in signing him is if we can get I think we can maybe all oh, agree across the panel and it's taking Lauren Shanklin out of it for a minute that Dessels is a debate on his own, right? He's yeah. a few years will say he's not the guy to be world number nine next season. A few years would say he is, right? I think that's I think that's fair to say overall. Where I'm coming from on it is I think if you sell Dessers and you bring in Warren Shankland at a cheaper price for that money, you've got a guy that's going to come in and score goals. And see when I, I'm not meaning him to come in to be Rangers number nine. I just want him in that squad because of what he can offer. And see if, like I, like I put in the group chat earlier on, boys, it was, if we can bring in Roof's away as well. So if we sell Dessers and Roof and we take Shankland in with Danilo and a striker that fits the player trading model, I think that's an ideal sort of um, trio to go with going into the season. I don't know what you think about that. That's not really, it's not really a point up for debate. I, mean, I just think him part of a trio is essential to be brutally honest with you because of what he does he scores goals in the league yeah Shona the guy has scored um, a hell of a lot of goals this season um, he's clearly knocking on the door for Scotland and he's probably got a lot of clubs in the championship uh, as well as other other teams uh, across Europe looking at this guy um, why could he not do a job for us when clearly he's doing everything right at his own club I think for me, like uh, I do think that Shantling could score goals at Rangers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I think he is a decent player. Dad, I just don't think he will suit Clement's style of play as well. That's another thing. I think if you're looking at that heat map, that shows you for me that's not what you want your striker to be doing in a, in a game of football. For me, anyway, is that I, I looking for it from a manager's point of view? I don't want my striker to be in the box and covering that amount of, um, uh, what do you call it, amount of, uh, uh, like I don't think I, personally, I don't think you want him to be covering that amount on the pitch if you're a striker. I think when you went from your striker, you want him in the penalty box, and you can see from the de the Dacers, um heat map that he's obviously obviously more of a number nine and more of a poacher. Looking at this heat map here, so look, I I just I would rather get away from the the kind of serial Dacers, Lauren Shankland. As I, as I say, it's about a case of do you th do we think that Lauren Shankland is good enough for Rangers? I just personally. Don't think that we should be paying that kind of money for a guy who is, and he's going into his thirties. Like uh, Billy said, he's going to obviously go on a downward spiral. I think uh, he's very, very reliant on um, what, what anything that Hearts do. 
And yeah, I think for us, um, for me, it's just not the type of striker that I think that Rangers would be looking at. Um, just looking at the type of strikers that Rangers have gone for with under Clement and the way his style of play is. Um, but look, that's, that's up to another debate. I don't know if anyone wants to come in and, and, and disagree with me there. But look, um, I just feel as if there's no pressure on him at Hearts. And uh, yeah, I think there'd be a lot more pressure on him at Rangers uh, to succeed. And uh, look, he is a Rangers man. I get that. Um, which is obviously great to have. That that's what you want. Um, but I think for me, if you're going to look at it overall, I think uh, he can't even get into this, into the first. Well, you should have said he's not a starter for the, for the Scotland squad. So if he was scoring that many goals and he was that good, why is he not getting into even the Scotland squad for me? Um, and then obviously looking at his European record, I don't know if anybody goes on about his he scored goals in Europe. Look, at the end of the day, it's totally different at Gaelic Fish when you're coming up to um, against when it's Rangers for, for, for me. So, do I think if Shanley was to come in next season with Danilo and Desers, do I think he'd be number one? I don't think so. I think we'd be going with Danilo. I think that's the, the kind of guy you want to yeah. go with that player trading model. You want to you want to improve uh, Danilo and get a, big, a higher transfer fee for that. And I don't think you'll get your money back in Shanley. I think it's a case of, um, we keep on saying this about guys that are coming into our club and stealing a wage, I think, uh, for me, at that age, you'll be, steal you be stealing a wage. Fighting talk, Scotty, come on. So, right, you spoke about you don't think he's a Ranger striker in terms of because he's not in the box enough. If I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you, you know a lot more about what Big Phil says more than I will, but I'm pretty sure when Fabio Silva signed that come on, said something along the lines of, Silva was come on's type of striker, likes his strikers dropping deep, connecting play, doing a bit of work outside the box. Clearly, by the heat map, that's what Shanklin does. So, therefore, I think when I was talking to Graham on the interview, he says that Shanklin even played to a 10 and a 10 and behind Josh Janelli last season at Hearts. How to run all that as I don't know either, but it shows you that he's got that out of box work that's needed to help create your Rangers number nine needs to. Work off the ball to create chances. It's, it's modern day fab. We've seen it under Morelos and stuff as well. Um, in terms of Scotland, we all know Steve Clark's stubborn and he's very loyal to the players he's got. For an example, off topic, I was speaking the other day and I want I want Lewis Ferguson in the Scotland squad. I can't believe he's not a starter in that midfield. And while Callum McGregor's out, I think this is Ferguson's chance to come in. But as an example, Ferguson won't start at the Euros. It will be Callum McGregor because at Steve Clark's player. So that's where I would come at you, Shona, in terms of Shankland, as he's not going to get in because Steve Clark's fiercely loyal to the players that he picks. Billy, I saw your hand up there. Did you have something that you wanted to add on that? I did. <clears throat> I, did. I feel, though, again, I'm not saying Shankland probably wouldn't score some goals for us. I feel the elephant in the room with Shankland is teams don't set up and park the bus when hearts come to town. They do to us. He's he's not fast enough. He's not his feet aren't quick enough. It, it's true, Scott. He, he isn't. He, have um, you watched? Have you watched the Hearts match this season? Yeah, mate. I, I, I mean, not everyone. But... Castle. Right. Say that again, have, mate. Sorry. Have, have you put? Have you watched a, a Hearts game when they play at home at Tynecastle? Hearts are that good that teams are coming in, parking the bus in front of them. That, that's not it. what I've, I've seen watched. anyway. But I, I, I've, I'm just saying, I've, I've not seen every game. But we get parked the bus, especially at Ibrox, every every game. Apart from maybe um, maybe Hibs will come out or, or Celtic or whatever, but he, he's not the type of striker that is able to do that quick pass and move, getting in front of a, the defender and you know beating it. That, that's to me why he's not suitable for us because he's he's not in the mold, he's not in the the style of player that we would actually need to score twenty goals for us. He would get maybe nine or ten. Chris Boyd Dave. was quite slow, wasn't he? Chris Boyd was quite slow and. Teams parked the bus every week against us and he still scored tons of goals. Um, you think it's as bad then as it was now, Dean? Aye, I do. It's, 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 yeah. just, it's, it's just called differently. It's no part of the bus anymore. It's a low block. It's the same thing, in my opinion. And I also feel that we shouldn't be looking at every single player we sign as, as going to have a sell-on value. We, we can't, you know, that, that's just not sustainable if you've got a team for like 20, 20, four-year-olds, you, you need experience in there. You need players that know, know the league. You need players that are ready to, you know, come in and, and hit the ground running. But we always have a failure in that in that department. Every player we sign, oh, we need to give them time to build their IKEA eh, chest the drawers. Okay, what I mean, it's we, we need players that can come in and are going to be ready for day one. And Shankland, again, 
fits that mould. And irrespective of he's only got two or three years left to get in 20, 30 goals a season, that's still two or three years of us winning potential uh, leagues and cups and whatnot. But Dean, that's how many years is that? That's 100 goals, Dean. It's 100 goals. 100 goals, three years. Yeah. 100 goals. He's... Yeah. Yeah. Billy, what are your thoughts? I'm yeah, no, that. I just I was I was looking at his, his stats and most of his goals are scored in the championship by far. Is he just a good championship player, Scotty? No, no, I think he's better than that, but sorry, I've been asking Scott. No, go on, Billy, go on, go on and answer it, please. No, no, I, I think obviously he learned he was he was a good player in the championship. He he goes to Belgium and scores what seven goals the whole season up against better defenders. Does everybody remember Diego Forlan signed for Man United with shite, excuse my language, went abroad and <laughs> then he was the best player in the World Cup in 2010? Does, 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 do you remember that, guys? Yeah, everybody got a good few weeks. Are you comparing Shanglin now to Diego? I'm just saying it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't happen for everybody, every team, you know. so Never happened for four land at Man United, but how, it happened. How for, many how many goals did Kamara Roof score when he signed for Anderlecht? Not half as much as he had for Rangers. I'm telling you, see the amount of goals that Kamara Roof scored for Anderlecht. He's could probably go and look this up. He's he played for them about two years, I think. He was away for Leeds, and in his appearances, his goals to game ratio is nowhere near as good as what it is at Rangers. And see, just going back to. Yeah, just going back to what Dean said there about obviously uh, talking about Scottish Scottish players, we do not rather get in somebody like Conor Barron, uh, Lennon Miller, or David Watson from Kilmarnock and can use that as your as your player trading model than spending money on the likes of Shankland at the same amount of value um, or and not getting getting any money back. For me, uh, I think that would be more of a a better way to look at Scottish players than it would be to look at the likes of Lawrence Shankland, who, as I said, can't even get into the Scotland team. Can I I'll, come in I'll, there? Sorry, I'll just to uh, finish, I, I, look, I did look it up. Um, he played 13 games for Anderlecht, scored six goals. Against that, Shankland played 27 and scored seven. Right, aye, so but Ruf, both, Ruf was uh, more... But they're, both a completely, but they're both at completely different stages of their career. Just <laughs> 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 change the argument <laughs> then. <laughs> Ruf's 25, <laughs> a bit, Shankland's a, a young boy when he's been Shankland's a lot younger when he's been here. Um... <laughs> Right, look, I'm going to I'm going to move this on um, to to my next question. Um, look, we all want to see Rangers developing. Clement will want to come in and put his own style and imprint on the team. We're seeing that as it flows through with the players he has, but clearly he wants to recruit new players in that fits the style of play. Does Lawrence Shankland improve Rangers over a period of time, both domestically and in Europe, or is it a sticking plaster to put over a a Number nine in our team that clearly can't score goals. Dean, I'm going to come to you first of all. Shanklin comes in and it's not that they've been sticky plastic, but he comes in and improves that team, you know, domestically and in, on the continental stage for sure. Um, 100%. Uh, Do you think in Europe as well? Do you think he's got the ability to scare defenders to put them off as he scored goals at that level? I'm pretty sure he's scored a few for Hearts in the Conference League, so. He's, you know, I, I mean, if, if we have Shankland in the team and he's leading the line and, and he's getting the chances that we create, he's putting them in the back of the net. Yeah. Shona? Uh, well, mine's quite a short story. I know Dean was talking about the, the Conference League there, but we actually have Europeans top goal scorer for the Conference League. So that's quite a short story for me. So it always comes back to Dessers, doesn't it? I love this. Always back to Dessers. <laughs> I said, I said, the last eight doesn't want to talk about Dessers. Oh, yeah, that's Dessers. true. Actually, Shona, you've changed your tune. Sell them, um, and you bring in a bit. Sell them for your four million back at Italy in the summer, and you bring in a better, more proven striker in Scottish football. All we want to see every season is league titles and cup wins. And yeah, but that doesn't that, does, that doesn't that doesn't matter if you're scoring. Dessers that, that's one, Celtic one on one with Joe Hart and. We've spoke about it before, Sean. We, we all know what he done. He bottled it. Yeah, but Shanklin's been in Balogun and Shanklin's been in Balogun and Sutter's back pocket for me. For me, it's not really about what, how many goals. It's not really about. That's, 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 that's a great thing then that he's not playing against him if he's playing the Rangers Chelsea next season, isn't it? That's a great. No, thing I'm then. just. He's I'm just. I, I just. I just look at the bigger picture. He's brilliant at it. Yeah. The same. Yeah, I just. 
Good. Once again, Celtic yeah, for Rangers, Chris Boyd. One goal against Celtic for Rangers, Chris Boyd. Yeah, but I, yeah, but I, I look at the bigger picture. It's not really about the amount of goals that you're going to score in a game. It's all about getting three points on the board for me. So at the moment, um, I know you guys are obviously having a bit of a Dessers bash in here and, and obviously going on about Lauren Shanklin, but see at the end of the day, guys, see as long as we get three points on the board and we win, you can win every game one nil every, for the rest of the, the, the whole season. You win that league and that's all that's important for me is if you win league titles, I think, Scotty, you'll be coming back to me in May if we do win this league and we have that those kind of players. Well, you're saying to yourself going into next season when Clement brings in more of his own players, um, I still think that if we can manage to get the likes of uh, Cortez and Sima across, I think what a front three or we could have with Danilo, Cortez, Sima and Dessers there. I just don't think that uh, going out there and buying Shanklin at the money that obviously Hearts will want. I know he's only got a year left in his contract, but I think for me, you'd probably be looking at trying to get like Niles Cock and looking at somebody like Kevin Denke that's out in the Belgian league that's scoring 20 plus goals. I think you're probably looking at somebody like him for around just over a, maybe about a couple of million pounds more than him that you're obviously going to get a higher transfer fee back on. So look, it's all about opinions. But for me, I think um, it doesn't really matter if you're scoring 15, 20. Tw I would love it, obviously, because I think the last player that scored 20 plus goals for us in the season was Kenny Miller. So if uh, Dessers goes on to score 20 plus goals for me this season, I think um, Scotty said there he hasn't scored in the big games. Neither did Alfredo Morelos, and I don't think he's got the same bashing as what yeah. as what Dessert like has. So, like, no, I just I'm just saying that I just think it's all for me. It's all about three points on the board. I can not care less if we won one nil, five nil, six nil, <laughs> whatever. As long as we get three points on the board. Aye, but see, Sean, I'm going to come back at you on that because I think if what Rangers as a club, like coming off a of Shankland for a minute, right? I think what Rangers done as a club in January was. They're playing a risky game. They brought in Fabio Silva, who is more of a player that can play anywhere across the front three. The new Danilo's injury, the new Seema's injury was there. We didn't bring in a striker. And I just hope that that doesn't come back to bite us at the end of the season. Because to me, Dessers looked tired there. I think that's why he's going he's through a wee goal drought just now. I think the big man shot up, to be brutally honest with you. Yeah, I think I've spoken to you about that yesterday. I don't think it's, I think all the players are shattered. I don't think you can just put that down to Dessers. I think the biggest reason for us in the last three games that we've been looking leggy and not creating enough is because Todd Campbell's been out the team. I think Todd Campbell's absolutely vital. I think he's been playing really, really well and you've noticed that lack of creativity. But look, it's all about opinions at the end of the day, but like that's just the way I look at it. Billy, do you yeah. think... Thanks, Ross. No, 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 no worries. I, I was just going to pose the question back to you. Do you think that given Rangers' ambitions, both Europe and domestically, that Shanklin comes in and, and actually makes a, a difference to this team in a positive way? Or is he a squad player? For me, he makes a difference to this team. But we're not going to get him in time for him to play in this team. What I'm hoping for next season is we probably need two strikers. <clears throat> I would like someone of Danilo's quality brought in and someone as an understudy. And I, I don't think Shanklin fits that, to be honest with you. Um, he's too old he, he, is he really that much of a presence um, is he that experienced he's not really got that much high level experience not a great seven international caps not played a lot in Europe get someone in as you were saying Shona for the, these players from the Belgian League somebody along those, that mould that might cost a wee bit more but we've got more potential in them for making a profit and also the the um, we also can bring in maybe a younger Scottish player to play that third position that doesn't have to have the world on his shoulders for scoring 20 goals a season, at least at the moment. Do you know what? Do you know what would be an interesting debate just going on there? It would be an interesting debate would be like, and I know we won't be able to afford him because I think Aberdeen will win £7 million, pounds, but who would you rather have, Shanklin or Miofsky? Miofsky. For the price, for the price it's going, if you get Miofsky's out of Rangers budget, Shona, if you ask me. Seven eight million point I don't think we're going to want, but you're not going to. Shankland's going, going to be nowhere near that in the summer. So budget wise, I'm going with Shankland. Ability wise, if they're both the same price, I'm obviously going to go with Miofsky because if that's a player trading model more. But in terms of price and just being realistic, it's Shankland for me. Dean, would you would you like to see Rangers try and um, allow? Clement to bring in their own players or or do you think it's wise for him to say this guy's scoring goals in the league let's get him in immediately and then build from there um, I, I I think you've got to look at what's 
what's happening in the league and the best players in the league. And I keep reverting back to years gone by, but Dick Advocate came in, Rangers played, I think, played against Hearts and he wanted to sign Neil McCann. Neil McCann obviously was a successful player for us, won, won, a, few, won, won a few medals. And, you know, we've had, as I said, Scottish players that have, you know, been playing the league, know what the league's about and made and always made the team and the squad better. And we don't have any of that at the moment. And going by things I've picked up with, come on, he's, you know, he's quite adaptable to bringing in players from the Scottish League and, you know, moulding them to how he wants them to play. And, and we've, you know, it's evident for everybody to see that he can he can definitely get a, a few a few more levels out of some players as he, as he's you know done since he's came in with us. Mm-hmm. And and Billy, what happens? Here's a scenario for you: two years time, we're still faffing about trying to find out a, a good number nine. In the meantime, Shanklin's bagged twenty five goals in the past two seasons, and that ship sailed. Is, is that a realistic situation? And if so, why are we not buying this guy now as a proven striker against, low, you know, potentially the, the opposition in the league who, you know, we, we struggle to dig wins out against, you, you, you know, away from home, your Motherwells, your St. Johnson's, your Kilmarnock's? I think it's not, a, it's not unrealistic to think he might score those levels for Hearts. Again, I've said before, I don't think he would score that level for us. But I don't think it's realistic. Um, well, I've got more hope in, in Clement that he's going to, at least in the next two seasons, bring in a striker that is able to score goals in, in this league and, and not just this league, in Europe as well. So I'm, I'm more hopeful that Clement will have, and, and Coppin as well, will have someone in mind to come in and fill that role, which fits a model better. Yeah, and I think we're, we're, you know, we're, we're all sat there with hope, wondering what's going on, and I'm sure they'll have contingencies. But is this not just low-hanging fruit that we should be saying, yes, this guy's banging goals in, get him in the door if he costs what we think he might cost? Me personally, no, no. It's, it's if he was just a wee bit younger, I, I maybe agree with you, um, Ross. But I, I just mm. think he's beyond. He's probably at his peak right now, and he's only going to go downhill. Okay, well that, that that's fair enough, um, Scotty. I'm just going to come back round to you. Um, oh. Are we trying to spoon feed a player into a Rangers team when Clement hasn't had his chance yet to really impact it? You know, he's playing with players that weren't in, brought in by him. The players that he's brought in are right. of a top level. Are we not spoon feeding this guy a square peg in a round hole here just because he's putting the ball in the net for, a, you know, for, for albeit for um, you know a Hearts team that are performing well, but but he's sort of overachieving within that team. I think if anybody is spoon feeding him, it's Lauren Shankland himself because he's then he's talking on a park cross, he's scoring goals. I don't think I think we can all agree on one thing tonight is that Phil, Phil Clement's not going to sit there and allow somebody to tell him that oh by the way that player's arriving tomorrow. You're, you're coaching him. I don't think come on to that type of manager. I don't think he's yeah. I don't think he's up for it. In terms of what Billy was saying, uh, Billy, I'll come back to you because do you not think that Rangers will get more levels out of Shankland? No. Because he's no, coming to a better team? No. I don't, oh, Scott, sorry. No, I genuinely don't. Um, I, I, I... Can I ask why, please, Billy? It, as, as Sean has pointed out, the, the, the whole Hearts team is set up for him. He wouldn't have it that way with us. We play with more attacking players and we need goals from different areas of the park. He wouldn't get the, the same attention from the rest of the team that he gets with Hearts. But do you not agree that Desers has been up two, three levels since Clement came in? And I think Sean has pointed out that he's what, a goal every two, three games or something, Sean, now for, for when Clement came in. Is that right? Yeah. Desers. Yeah, so I think, I think Clement, since Clement came in, he scored 11 goals in 14 games. I so he's so I mean doing that with Desers and I think up until Clement came in the whole fan base was just like you know why is he wearing a Rangers strip? We shouldn't be wearing a Rangers strip or words to that effect. And Shanklin's already scoring the goal, so you don't think he'd be able to do the similar with Shanklin, no? I'm mean, it's we never. I don't think we'll ever find out, Dean. Well, I hope we don't. We don't find out, but um, will he, I think he would. He'd probably improve him. Um, in general, but I just don't like he gets these goals because he is the only goal scorer. There's no one else on the end of these chances really for them. That, that it wouldn't be that it wouldn't be that case here. I just don't think he would get half as many goals. Shona, have you got anything that you want to add on to that or, or jump in? 
No, I just kind of agree with exactly what Billy said. I think it's um, all down to your style of football and your style of play. And, and as you said, we've got goal scorers all over the pitch. I think I mentioned it earlier on, you've got Dessers, Sima and Tav all on plus uh, double figures for this season. Um, and as I said, I think um, the, the Hearts team has revolved around Shankland and... Yeah, if, if, if that was obviously Rangers and Shankland wasn't scoring the goals and losing those kind of games, think about the amount of the amount of uh, pelters he'd be getting for it. So, look, it's it's all a matter of opinion. I think, um, like I said before, I think there's other players that we could be looking at. I think um, you've got the likes of Fabio Silva. I think, obviously, Niles Poppin had worked with him before at PSV, and that's maybe why he managed to get a £35 million player. I don't think we'd be having this chat about Shankland if we'd signed... Uh, Silva on the last day of the transfer window. That was just my opinion. I think because we signed Silva at the very start, everybody seems to think that we needed another striker. But for so far, so good. I think what clement has been able to do, um, and like uh, Billy said, I just trust what him and Niles Poppin have got. I think the biggest thing for us, what I've noticed since Diamandi and uh, Cortez have came in, is guys that have hit the ground running. We've not had that before. I think that's what's been our biggest problem. We've had players that have come in and not hit the ground running. And I do believe that if um, Clement was here at the start of the season and obviously Dessers was up top, we'd have had 20 plus goals already this season. Interesting, interesting. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick round the room here, a quick whip round. I want a 30 second or, or 20 second elevator pitch on why we should or should not buy Mr. Shanklin. If you're watching Mr. Shanklin, I hope you're uh, I hope you're enjoying this show. Scotty, I'll come to you first. Hey, um, you sign him because he scores goals. You sign him because he's a Scottish international. He's a Rangers supporter. He... He comes in, he immediately improves the side. I don't think there's any question of that. That's the biggest selling point for me on him. He's got 12 months to run his contract. Like I say, I'll bring him in as part of a, a, th a three-striking department. And I'm not saying all three start every week before I start getting words put in my mouth. I'm saying he's part of a three who rotates, like we've seen with, with Big Phil come on. I think he's a tool that you, that you need in your squad. I think... Partly what Shona says there about Fabio Silva. This is where I was saying again about Rangers playing a risky game in January because Silva's only scored about three three goals, maybe one of them for left mid. He's very much a number nine playing as a number 10. He's not in the box often enough. If Silva and Dessers don't score the goals to win his league, you just need to hope James Tavernier does. Mm. Just for uh, argument's sake then, Billy, let's hear your pitch. I just, it, there's just better options out there, mate. I think, and um, you you said uh, the Scotty that, um, and this isn't there's no pun or anything here that he, he was a tool, but I think it was the wrong tool for us. <laughs> um, no, no, genuinely, mate, I just feel, um, he's like it's like well, you just see him the goal scoring thing, and it's like with a the man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But I think Clement has more in his tool bag than just a hammer, and. I think we will play differently than the way Hearts do. That they get the best out of best out of them, but we won't play like that, and we won't get the best out of them. Dean, over to you, mate. Let's hear it. I'm Alan Sugar. I've got the checkbook out. I'm going to sign this boy for Glasgow Rangers. Tell me how. Tell me why. Because he's um, he's an experienced player in our league. Will score thirty goals a season. That will help us win multiple competitions. Um, get three years out of him, we'll, we'll win three leagues. Solid pitch. Shona, over to you. Yeah, well, exactly what Billy said. We've had players in our league like Martin Boyle, Stephen May, Kevin, Kevin Nismet, Van, v Van Veen Duke. They haven't been able to cut it, and I don't think Lawrence Shank will be able to cut it at Rangers. I don't think it'll, you'll suit Clement's style of play. And I do think there are other better options out there for your value for money. I think you're not going to get any money back on him. And I think it'd be a waste to spend three to five million pounds on somebody like Lawrence Shanklin when I think you can get better value for money out there. Very interesting. Well, look, thank you all for your opinions this evening. It's been great to hear the fours and against for Lawrence Shanklin. Um, it'd be good to hear your thoughts and comments below. So please do put those in and we'll... We'll read those and reflect on those and share those in the next uh, in the next pod. Um, one thing is for certain, we've got a very interesting um, close or open window when it comes around. Will Shanklin be wearing royal blue? Time will tell.
Thank you very much for watching. Thank <music> you.